What's poppin' y'all? Back like I never left. Had to blow the dust off this thing real quick. But we're here to cover the 19th chapter of 48 Laws and tie it in with the story from within hip-hop or media as a whole. And Law 19 reads, Know who you're dealing with. Do not offend the wrong person. There are many different kinds of people in the world, and you can never assume that everyone will react to your strategies in the same way. Deceive or outmaneuver some people, and they will spend the rest of their lives seeking revenge. They are wolves in lamb's clothing. Choose your victims and opponents carefully. Then, never offend or deceive the wrong person. The story we're going to cover today is one of con artists, a dupe, a mark, target, or sucker. It's the early 20th century and a group of con artists decided to link up in Denver, Colorado. During the winter, they would go conquer the South, finessing, as some would call it. In 1920, the leader of this group, Joe Fury, was making hundreds of thousands of dollars in Texas with his con games. In Fort Worth, though, he met a potential mark by the name of J. Frank Norfleet, a country guy who had his own ranch with a lot of cattle. Norfleet had fell for the okie doke. He was tricked with the potential money he stood to make, emptied his bank account of $45,000, and handed it over to them. Several days later, they delivered his supposed millions of dollars, which was a couple of real bills that were wrapped around a ton of newspaper clippings. So similar to a lot of rappers flexing those stacks on Instagram and music videos. What usually happened after someone got played is they would hold their L and keep it pushing since they were just so embarrassed of having fell for the con. Not Norfleet though. He had different plans. He went to the police who told him that there was nothing they could possibly do about it. But that didn't stop him. He was going to take this into his own hands. He said to the detectives and I quote, Then I'll go after these people myself. I'll get them too, if it takes the rest of my life. Vengeance was on his mind. He wasn't going to let them get one over on him. He had his wife take over their ranch and was off to the races. He would travel throughout the country, looking for other people who had been conned, trying to get information from them. Finding one who came forward and identified one of the members of the ring was in San Francisco. He found him and got him locked up. But instead of facing his term in prison, he decided to erase himself from this earthly existence. He wasn't done, though. He found another member of the ring in Montana, caught him on some Red Dead Redemption-type activity with rope around him, and dragged him to the town jail. He even took a trip across the Atlantic Ocean to England, visited Canada, as well as Mexico, in search of Joe Fury and his right-hand man, W.B. Spencer. He found Spencer in Montreal, Canada, chasing him through the streets, but, alas, he escaped. He later tracked him down and finally caught him in Salt Lake City, Utah. He turned himself in to the law. Now for the main man that conned him, Joe Fury. He found him in Jacksonville, Florida, and dragged him to face justice in Texas. But that wasn't enough. He needed the entire ring destroyed, spending an excessive amount of money, as well as another year of his life in hunting them down. But he successfully took every single one of them down and had them locked up behind bars. There were some that he didn't even catch, but they were so frightened by his relentlessness that they decided to just turn themselves in. After five long years of this, Norfleet took down the country's largest con artist ring. What did he have to show for it? Well, he was now bankrupt, ruined his marriage, but most importantly, he got his revenge and he died a satiated man. Some people's insecurity and ego fragility cannot tolerate the slightest offense. To see if you're dealing with such a type, test them first. Make, say a mild joke at their expense. A confident person will laugh. An overly insecure one will react as if personally insulted. Being fooled, conned, disrespected has activated their self-doubt, and they're desperate to repair the damage. Were the mortgage on Norfleet's ranch, the collapse of his marriage, And the years of borrowing money and living in cheap hotels worth his revenge over his embarrassment at being fleeced? To the Norfleets of the world, overcoming their embarrassment is worth any price. Academic's life really changed when he decided to venture out into the mainstream by going on Everyday Struggle. When you create content on YouTube, the people that are consistently watching you, they generally like you. They may disagree with your takes, make fun of you every now and then, but the experience overall is usually positive. Otherwise, they would just leave and not pay attention anymore. Mainstream is different, though. It's reaching an audience that have no idea who you are, 
But worse, it reaches people who hate you for whatever reason, especially if you're co-host on a show where a large amount of fans of the person that's also on your show is now somewhat forced to watch you. Academics has been vocal of what he had to do to make it in an industry that, as he says, didn't let him in. And he has made sure to exact revenge on anyone who has clowned him or tried to take him down when he was perceived to be in a state of weakness. There's no point in hashing out all the back and forths academics has had with artists or other people within his industry. That would take us quite a while. But it is important to make note of the times he was disrespected, or even in the most recent example that we will get to later, perceive something as disrespect. Cue in none other than Chrissy Teigen wife of John Legend and, at the time, on the all-star team of Twitter fingers. She had clowned 6 9 and academics in one of those photos during a music video shoot, I believe that was in the Dominican Republic, and insinuated that they were gay. She wasn't the first to make that same joke. A ton of accounts on the internet were making that joke. But she saw it could gain her some clout, so she hopped on the bandwagon, as per usual for her during that time. Many people would have likely ignored it, perhaps been bothered by it for a day or so, and moved on, but academics, coming from a Jamaican background, was upset by this, justifiably so. But he said nothing, for quite a while at least. Like Norfleet, he bided his time until he could strike at her. What better way than when John Legend's album flopped? And that's where we got this infamous clip. Yo, she, actually, one time she sneaked this to me, so f*** that hoe, straight up, and John Legend could hear that. Don't have your bitch or any other how about you take that fucking big ass mouth of yours and that fucking weird ass looking face and start promoting your man's album? Maybe you wouldn't do twenty five thousand first week because you got all the jokes. And when you're trying to get at niggas, you think you're the smartest, cutest, funniest thing possible, but your man is still fucking flopping. He's a legend doing twenty five thousand. That's a fucking flop. Chris Teigen suck a dick straight up. I got the biggest platform, and I owe you bum ass niggas. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive it home day after day. Day after day, day after day, day after. My whole whole liquors are spilled. My whole liquors are spilled right quick. My whole liquors are spilled. My whole liquors are spilled. Right, I don't know what happened. Safe to say, what Chrissy Teigen thought was an innocent joke on her part was not interpreted the same way on the receiving end. He would leave her alone after this, but. The next couple of people were not afforded this mercy. Let's take it to Nav. The brown boy from EXO decided to, out of the blue on New Year's Eve of 2019, the turn of the decade, send out a tweet at Academics, which is still up, saying the following. Academics hop on and off dick so much, he probably got STDs. Who the f*** talks about Nav? Who? You gotta watch still your main single. You gotta watch my meek. You like every other rapper. You just trying to get the conversation about yourself. We're not talking about you right now, Nav. Get a f record. Don't write, don't write Uzi coattail to another collab. Where's your record? On that same night, in New Year's Day, academics went on a live stream and full onslaught against Nav and his career. This led to academics clowning Nav at any point in time that he could for the next 14 months straight. Every song release, every article every time. One stream was not enough, and he would also craft several narratives that did not make Nav appear too great when it comes to public perception, which is one of the most important things for any artist. Yet, Nav was still able to do some numbers on his album. Some say this didn't harm Nav at all, but if it didn't, there wouldn't have been a need or consideration by Nav to link up with academics and issue an apology. Honest to God, the source is, it, 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 it's me. I, I've started it. Uh, I'm man enough to say that. Knew it instantly, like, as soon as, like, went out, I'm like, yo, you know, I'm tripping, you know? Publicly on his live stream, after being reported in a negative light for over a year straight. Then there's the longest standing beef academics has had. One he had rarely entertained publicly until the past two years or so, and that's with College Kid. College Kid was a blog started in the early 2010s that was covering everything that was going on in the Chicago drill movement. They had started before, but existed alongside Academics War in Chirac, which quickly eclipsed them in popularity. This seemed to bother them because they would continuously attack Academics behind the scenes and in public. One of the things they did was buying the domain name DJAcademics.com. 
The regular academics.com had long since been taken by the once popular clothing brand. Several months ago, one of the two brothers that co-founded the blog together passed away from complications due to the virus, the last of his tweets having been spreading slander about academics. But he'll explain it better than I can. Y'all try to start a campaign. Y'all try to hit up Spotify. Y'all see Spotify? You sat in rock with Joe Rogan? You think that was about listening to a college kid, my nigga? <laughs> if you think you mad at academics with Spotify, give me a month. You're going to be madder. Actually, well, give me a week. You're going to be madder. And then give me a month. You probably, you might just kill yourself. Don't do it, though. Anyway, love Spotify. Um, Here's the point I was trying to make. If somebody attacked all, attacked the way you made an income, attacked everything about you, they try to buy your domain name, that's your name, they didn't want you to exist. They try to spread lies about you. They were attacking your integrity and your brand. If they fell to unfortunate circumstances, you would not say or you would not feel any empathy. This is what these guys did to me for years. For years. Why were they mad at me? All because people, they, they, they covered Chicago before me, but everybody preferred me. Ak would go on a tirade against the dead brother and the living one in clips during his stream after he had previously tried to hold his tongue. Um, one of these guys is, is in the dirt. That's a fact. Ray Sean Autry, half of the College Kid Brothers, he died. He died. After overdosing on hate. That's it. I'm, I'm sorry to say. I got to be honest with y'all. He ain't died of COVID. The nigga, instead of going to doctor's appointment, instead of focusing on his health, instead of focusing on family, instead of focusing on anything good, his last moments in life was sending out tweets hating on academics. I'm sorry to tell y'all that. The last five breaths he took, I was on his mind. It's very unfortunate. I got to keep it 100 with y'all because nobody want to talk about it. Go look at his tweets. His last tweet is saying, you act. It's like the Grim Reaper is like knocking on his door and he's like, no, nah, hold up. Let me get this off. You act. And the Grim Reaper just kick that shit down and say, come on, man, you're going with us. The last thing, his legacy, the legacy of college kid is nothing but a bunch of losers trying to hate on academics. But here's the thing, though. The other buffoon got out of the hospital. And rather than take heed, you know what he's back to doing? Hating on act. Let me pull this up for you. I couldn't believe it. I f believe it, chat. I really couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it, chat. I just couldn't f believe it. Your brother's in the fucking dirt. He just overdosed on hate. And you know what this thing is doing? The same fucking thing. Let me read you this fucking tweet. Let me read you this fucking tweet chat. Look. Look at this shit right here. He, he, look, look, look. He responded to somebody. This is him right here. January 27th. Nah, my bro transitioned. Bro, he ain't transitioned. He died. He dead. He ain't transitioned. He dead. If he transitioned, he transitioned to hater heaven. He's dead. Stop putting that shit with, oh, he transitioned, oh, my God, he like, he's, just like, he's in another form. No, nigga. He's in the academics hater heaven. There's a lot of people in there. <laughs> Yo, Chad, <laughs> name a few niggas who's in the academics hater heaven. There's <laughs> a lot of niggas in there <laughs> that was hating from the get-go. <laughs> Told him about he's, he's transitioned. Transitioned to what? Transitioned to a spirit hater. Anyway, my bro transitioned a legend. I ain't gonna lie, his bro was a legend. A legendary f Now, again, listen what he's saying. Y'all lost the battle. Y'all lost the war. Y'all lost everything. Why are y'all still going at AG? Which demonstrates something that is a consistency in academics logic. He only really has a problem with people that are famous, celebrities, artists, or the like that could actually harm him or prevent him from doing something 
disrespecting him or making fun of him. He ignored College Kid for eight years. It wasn't until they tried to get his Spotify deal taken down over accusing him of a very foul label to have, arguably one of, if not the worst, labels to have as a man because of a fake bad baby tweet that he never even sent out. After that, gloves were off, and they still continue to catch strays to this day. If there was ever revenge that academics decided to go above and beyond on a personal level to get extra credit and to destroy, it would be Rory and Maul. They were the first ones to diss him multiple times while they were on the Joe Budden podcast. One such event relating to how they felt he covered XXX Tentacion. I'll be honest with you, I, I was a little disgusted at some of the media outlets and, and people that were saying rest in peace and to the people that think I'm talking about academics, I am, but not just him. Don't do your coverage to instigate the f and then say rest in peace when it finishes. It's offensive. Yeah. It's gross. It's an awful process. People die over it because of people in their basements setting a standard for right. popularity. Right. These certain dudes that they are giving these platforms to, they're bozos. Like, academics is a bozo. He should not have a platform like he has because when real life shit happens, he shows just how much of a bozo he is. Just like Norfleet, academics didn't need to come back at them right away. He bided his time watched them from afar, until he decided to attack. He would clown the amount that they were paid in relation to Joe Budden and what the podcast was estimated to be making, make fun of the fact that they never built anything of their own, and talk about ownership to other people and podcasters when they themselves didn't own a lick of anything, and then laugh at and expose the reason for Rory's engagement falling apart. This was taken to a new level when they were fired from the Joe Budden podcast, and at the time left with nothing while Joe was still pulling in similar numbers without them. It was during this period of time that Rory allegedly delivered a letter to Academic's home and said on Twitter that he knew where he lived. This was a boundary and level of disrespect Academic's wouldn't tolerate, and he took it beyond personal. Justifiably so. And if that nigga, I'm not here to bully him. Listen, he been getting beat up by his girl. I think she ran off with a wedding ring. It's over. Flawless victory. Hats off, chat niggas win. That bum will never mention my name again. And that's how I'm gonna treat all these niggas, bro. That's the only way. Because if you sit here, I was sitting here mad cool, and everybody started to think, let's just bully academics. That's how that's how we get. It. Everybody was like, let's bully ac. That's what they were doing. So you know what I said? I right, I'm about to just catch a couple of y'all and just make a mean example out of y'all. Okay? He even says that he needed to make an example out of them so people would know that they couldn't get one over on him. Just like Norfleet needed people to know that he was not going to get conned without retribution. Academics claims to have ruined Rory's engagement by exposing the information of him having a side girl, who he also exposed as having been invited to Axe Crib and getting down with a member of the team. Rory's girl is getting piped out in my pool. No kizzy, no cap, I don't got no reason to lie. It was going on for uh, HD. I got the world's best cameras in the mansion. Academics has since then made Rory and Maul the butt of every joke, consistently make sure they know his podcast is far outranking theirs, and just like he predicted, Rory hasn't uttered a word about him since then. He's at the top of the media game currently, a feat that wasn't easy, and not without sacrifice in terms of health, be it regular alcohol consumption and weight gain, or for going enjoying a social life for years while building his brand, all to never be disrespected again. And he makes that known to none other than Coyle Ray and other rappers who he perceives to be disrespecting him by denying his podcast, as well as correcting his report on her first week album sales. You see all these artists, they're starting to get a little humble. It's humble fever coming on. Big I got y'all sales, the sales looking weak. Your sales looking weak. You was acting like you wasn't trying to do press. You was acting like you was bigger than the program. None of y'all bigger than Big Act. It's a fact. You feel me? 11K. Holy. Holy. I could add up all the sales for 11K. I think I made that this month. If an artist ain't down with my program, nigga, fuck you. And I'm going to keep it like that. You hear me? I'm cooling out. He would be like, yo, act you vindictive. Nigga, I built this shit by my damn self. If an artist don't rock with me, I crush him. 
That's how I deal with them. I don't give a fuck. If you talk, because if you ain't do my podcast and you flop, I'm roasting you to hell. This is a stick up. I'm certified in this. If y'all niggas don't do my podcast and you flop, I'm roasting you, nigga. Facts. Get down. That's you. You better. You better be winning if you don't do my. And don't be like yo, act why you like that. You know I'm like that, nigga. Because nobody gave me no fucking chance in this industry. So now when I'm when, when I got the leg up, I shit on y'all niggas willingly, lovely. I couldn't wait to report that fucking 11k, nigga, or 9k. I couldn't wait. You know why? You just try to front on me. Anybody front on me? Rest in piss. Norfleet's claim was that he didn't want anyone to be conned by this ring again. And academics claim for his crusade is to bring justice and fairness to the new media being disrespected by the old media conglomerates and the industry as a whole. The law claims, though, that these individuals rationalize their immoderate insecurity and the self-doubt they experience from being duped or disrespected by a righteous cause for revenge. Is that the case? We don't truly know what they think or feel. But if there's one thing that you definitely don't want, it's to be in the middle of either of their crosshairs. Let me know what y'all thought about this video. Give me a like because I was considering a part two to this specific law because there was another really interesting story that I wanted to cover and I thought it related almost one to one to something that happened within hip hop slash rap in the past two years. So if there's demand for that, comment down below and like the video and I'll check it out. And if there's demand for it, I'll make it probably within the next seven to 10 days. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Peace.